In the midst of the Necroz nightmare, a new ban list went into effect on April 1st, 2015. Blaster, Dragon Ruler of Infernos, Redox, Dragon Ruler of Boulders, Tempest, Dragon Ruler of Storms, Tidal, Dragon Ruler of Waterfalls, and Snatch Steel were all now banned from competitive play. Sinister Serpent, Tour Guide from the Underworld, Dragon Ravine, Preparation of Rites, Sacrifice, Symbol of Heritage, Temple of the Kings, Crush Card Virus, Exchange of the Spirit, Ring of Destruction, Skill Drain, and Vanity's Emptiness were all now limited to one copy each. Legendary Six Samurai Shien, Necroz of Brianak, Cleefort Scout, Charge of the Light Brigade, and Sacred Sword of Seven Stars were all now semi-limited to two copies. And finally, Brotherhood of the Firefist, Spirit Burner, Dragon Ruler of Sparks, Gladiator Beast, Bestiari, Gores, Emissary of Darkness, Goyo Guardian, Lightning Dragon Ruler of Drafts, Lone Fire Blossom, Reactant Dragon Ruler of Pebbles, Stream Dragon Ruler of Droplets, and Hieratic Seal of Convocation were all now unlimited to three copies. It is also worth noting that several of the banned cards that are now legal received a Rata to allow them to come off of the ban list, and this would start a trend for some other cards later to come. In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh's history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh's past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Strap yourselves in, because anything is possible. Welcome to the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. As I'm sure you just heard, there was a ban list in April of 2015, and it had a monumental impact on the sanity of players. Not so much on the metagame. It turns out that if Necroz is the clear best deck and emerges relatively unscathed, not much is going to be able to dethrone it. Sound familiar? Anyway, with two copies of Brianak in tow, Necroz rolled up to YCS Chicago, Illinois on April 11th, 2015, and did very, very well. While they were hit on the ban list, decks like Cleefort were still very popular alongside Burning Abyss and Shadal creeping back into meta contention as well. But Chicago's interesting because it contains one of the first breakout tops for this deck, Ritual Beast. Now, Ritual Beast is interesting for a number of reasons. It's contained within the same pack as Necroz. Two out of three hits ain't bad. Sorry, yo, Senju. But it's also very complicated to play. It's bifurcated into the psychic type tamers and the everything else typed beasts. And the two of them can contact Fuse into Ritual Beast Altai Canahawk, Altai Petalfin, or Altai Apelio. These individual monsters are extremely powerful, but at their core is an interaction that is pretty clearly unintended. Ritual Beast Altai Canahawk is a very powerful contact fusion that can return Ritual Beast monsters from your banished zone to the graveyard, but it can also, as a quick effect, tag out, returning monsters from your banished zone to the field. If you target monsters in your banished zone to return to the graveyard, then target at least one different banished monster to return to the field, the effect will attempt to resolve as much as possible, netting you a search with minimal investment. This interaction became the backbone of this strategy, and the strategy remained extremely popular specifically because of a pretty favorable Necroz matchup. While it wasn't 100 and 0, going 60-40 against Necroz during this time was something to be proud of, and it was able to propel Bobby Kenny into a top 16 finish. It's hard to explain to newer players, but at the time, this deck was pretty clearly hated by the player base. Well, the Canahawk loop is not necessarily simple. The deck is complex. It's got a lot going on under the hood, and as a result, your setup turn takes time. Now, this was a period in Yu-Gi-Oh when there weren't 15-minute setup turns that we have since become accustomed to, and as a result, players would sit twiddling their thumbs for five and a half minutes while their opponents languished through a combo just to be frustrated that they went to time in game three. Unsurprising they would do so, Necroz has so many tools to blank battle phases that it's unlikely that you're going to be able to present a lethal push without significant investment. As a result, this deck would eventually see hits not because of power level, but for external variables. The fact that players were taking too long to play their turns. I hope that I won't be doing so. I played a lot of this deck when it was legal, and as a result, I do still have the combos somewhere up here. But keep in mind that the difference between a practiced Ritual Beast pilot and a non-practiced Ritual Beast pilot is the difference between taking 30 seconds to set up and taking seven minutes. With that, let's go into the cards. First up is Ritual Beast Tamer Elder. When this card's been normal summoned, you get an additional normal summon of a Ritual Beast monster during your main phase this turn. 
finding Elder plus Canahawk is the normal combo, and so much of your deck is set up to facilitate finding it. Ritual Beast Tamer Lara on normal reborns a Ritual Beast from the graveyard, and when on normal reborns a Ritual Beast from your banished zone. Canahawk, as an ignition, can banish a Ritual Beast card from your deck face up. That is not a once per turn, so it's a great way to get the three materials necessary into your banished zone to make Ultai Canahawk tick. Spiritual Beast Rampangu can banish a Ritual Beast monster from your extra deck and then send one of the same type from your deck to the graveyard, kind of like Canahawk insofar as it can get material into the banished zone, but that material can't be used because, of course, it hasn't been properly summoned. Two copies of Apelio. This is to ensure that your monsters in the graveyard remain in the banished zone where they are wont to be, and it's a great way to push for huge damage. And Spiritual Beast Petalfin, a one of that is really fantastic removal against a lot of the format's threats, notably Dante and Construct. We've got two copies of Effect Veiler, three copies of Emergency Teleport, Foolish Burial, Gold Sarcophagus, Triple Mystical Space Typhoon, Raigeki Soul Charge, Double Mirror Force, One Ring of Destruction, Ritual Beast Ambush, which allows you to special summon Ritual Beast monsters from your banished zone and graveyard, Ritual Beast Steeds, the card that you are setting up as part of your turn one combo, destroys monsters on the field equal or up to the number of Ritual Beast monsters you control, Solemn Warning, Torrential Tribute, and Vanity's Emptiness now at one. In the extra, we've got three copies of Ulti Apelio, three copies of Canahawk, two Petalfin, and then one piece of some fours and twos, Castell, uh, Digasto Phoenix, Evil Swarm Exciton Knight, and Centuria. In the side, we've got Artifact Lancia, Flying Sea, Maxi, Dimensional Fissure, Twisters, Chaos Trapple, Macro Cosmos, and Wiretap. Hoping we can show off this deck's best matchup, but keep in mind, Necroz is still very good. You know, I should probably have worn the Jank Tank over the Shirt of Shame because for how poorly I performed playing Necroz in the previous episode, uh, I definitely deserve it. And then, you know, Joseph decided, hey, Alex, you know what? You played Necroz so well last time, I think you should run it back and play it again. Clearly, someone is fiending for free wins because they are losing in the overall count. But today we are bringing a new variant of Necroz to the duel. And uh, the thing is, Necroz doesn't really change a whole lot. We do have the new April Banlist in effect, but as you can see, you know, in true Konami fashion, they can't really hit the deck too hard. Otherwise, they're going to uh, cut into their own sails. So all we really have in terms of hits are Necros of Brianak going to two and Preparation of Rights going to one. I think those are the only changes to this deck and everything else is still at full power. So Necros, as you can imagine, is still the best deck in the entire format for probably the next like year or so. And it's not going anywhere anytime soon. I can promise you, I think I'm going to do better this time. I took some time to actually practice some of the lines a little bit better to hopefully make up for the fact that I did so poorly last time. So you can at least expect a little bit better out of me this time, but not by much. So let's do the card by card. This time we're on Dance Princess of the Necroz. This card's interesting. Your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to the activation of a Necroz ritual card. So it's sort of like having Magical Meltdown built into a monster, but obviously for rituals. And Necroz ritual monsters you control cannot be targeted by opponent's card effects. I think that's kind of a relevant effect as well, especially when uh, effect failure is a very common way to stop something like Trishula. The other effect is if this card is tributed by a card effect, you can target one of your banished Necroz monsters, except Dance Princess, add it to your hand. You can only use this effect once per turn. Very funny, uh, the spelled Necroz incorrectly on here. That's not a typo. If you look on the text of this card, it is actually like this on there as well, and they decided to keep it like that. So very funny. We, of course, are still on Jin because Jin's still around for some reason. Also, I take that back. Vanity's Emptiness is now limited to one. Not banned, just limited to one. Just keep that in mind. We, of course, are still on the three Manju and three Senju because they're the best starters we have. We have two Shuret because this is standard at this point. Double Brianak, a one single copy of Klausulus. This is very iffy because being able to manage your resources means you cannot be as willingly to th easily throw this card away just uh, willy-nilly like I did in the previous episode. So I will be much more careful with this. Still on the Decisive Armor, still a fine card, but again, it's sort of like in and out of decks just depending. A Gungnir and a Trish as well as Triple Unicorn and Triple Valkyris. That's it for the monsters. The spells, we have a single Book of Eclipse and a Book of Moon, a Dark Hole, and a Regeki as our outs to the Jinlock, but also just generically good cards in general. We have our two, two, two mirrors of two cycle, two kaleidoscope, and two mirror. Uh, at this point later on, I think it may actually transition to a three, two, one ratio of three kaleido, two mirror, and one cycle. I don't remember for sure, but maybe in a later Necroz list, we will see this transition in the mirrors. Only one prep and triple shared ride in the main. Obviously, this was in preparation for the mirror match, but it does have some crossover because let's be honest, a lot of decks are going to add cards from their deck to their hand in some form or another. So this card, while it is targeted for the mirror match, it's going to get value in other matches as well. Also for the mirror, Triple Mind Crush. This card is a card that has had a very interesting lifespan throughout Yu-Gi-Oh's history. This is still at a point where Mind Crush allows you to look at your opponent's hand to confirm whether or not all copies of that card have been removed from their hand. And so not only can you Mind Crush something out of their hand, that's very important. It's also good for stopping Valk specifically 
specifically, so that way your opponent isn't going to be able to actually, in the mirror match, be able to negate your battle phase, and you can go in for an OTK. But being able to hit anything for their key plays is also good as well, but the hand knowledge is definitely where it's at. This does get changed later on, and Mind Crush becomes a significantly inferior card by comparison, and of course the one Vanity's Emptiness. For the extra deck, we did not forget the Arc Lights this time. We have Shooting Quasar Dragon and Star Eater for our Kaleidoscope plays, and then we just have an entire slew of rank fours, including Dweller, Castell, Double Digusto Emerald, because recycling resources is very important, Diamond Dire, Exiton, Cowboy, Lavabal Chain, 101, Ragna Zero, and Rhapsody. And then for the side deck, a single copy of Denko Senka. This card is actually quite good to stop opposing Vanity's Emptiness, or just anything that might, you know, be problematic that you could run into. Double Flying C, I think this is for Burning Abyss specifically. Also, I guess has crossover with Teller Knight. Triple Maxi, I mean, you could main this, obviously, but uh, we have the Shared Rides in here instead. Triple MST, again, just to be able to stop stuff like Vanities or anything else that's annoying. Same thing goes for this fourth copy, which is essentially a Twister. We have two Breakthrough Skill just to be able to deal with different things as well, and Triple Royal Decree for any of the back row decks, which, to be fair, if you weren't playing Necroz, most of the other decks around this time were trap decks. I mean, think about it. Klee, BA actually shifted to being much more trap heavy to be able to deal with Necroz. Shadal even started playing some stuff as well, and uh, Teller Knight. So everything is pretty basically susceptible to Decree, so it's not a terrible side in going first. So we'll see how this goes. I, I pray I do better than I did last time, and I really want to show that I've learned from my past mistakes, but it's also up against a deck I'm not very familiar with in Ritual Beast, so I'll do my best. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not make you wait any longer. It's time to do it. Well, Joseph, uh, you know, I really wanted to just embarrass myself a second time by playing Necroz and showing that I have no capable understanding of how to play this deck whatsoever. And on top of that, if that wasn't enough, I gave you a deck that you are actually incredibly adept at piloting. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure this episode's going to go well. Well, if it makes you feel any better, this deck uh, that I'm playing sucks balls. Um, <laughs> that might that might tip the scales just a little bit. Potentially, just a little bit. It may depend on the die roll, but uh, we'll have to see. Ritual Beast, very interesting deck with uh, throughout this game's history, don't you think? Yeah, no, it's uh, it's really good. As long as you can guarantee you open Elder Canahawk every single turn, and, uh, and that of is not. Of course, you can do that, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, we'll see. I guess we will find out. Shout out the patron. It is Nalem. Thank you for the support, buddy. You got the hand up. Yes, I had even. I rolled a four. It's odd, baby. No, I'm going second. I'm so seven good. Seven right, minutes. Just... The amount of time. Seven it's minute turn take one. Me. Buckle up, ladies and gentlemen. This is all gonna right. be bad. It was like to trish you at the end of all this, so that'll be funny. I'm gonna, gonna be honest. Luck, if I don't open Elder Canahawk, I lose. Okay, I opened Elder Canahawk. <laughs> Uh, actually, I did not open Elder Canahawk. I opened okay. E-Telly Canahawk. We're going to go E-Telly here. I mean, that's basically the same thing. It is not, uh, because you can only special summon Ritual Beast Tamer Elder once per turn. So that is not the same thing. Right, so I we're going to go Canahawk here, and we're going to trigger the effect. Okay, sure. So go ahead and walk us through this while you do this combo. All right, so um, we're going to have to banish a uh, a non-Ritual Beast monster here. So here's the deal. The Ritual Beasts are a little confusing for new players because Spear Ritual Beast is the same as Ritual Beast, right? Uh, it has Ritual Beast within it. So both of these cards are part of the same archetype, but they have found a really ingenious way to keep what I'm gonna call for the rest of the episode for the simplicity of the audience, the Tamers away from the Beasts. And the Tamers uh, all get really powerful effects on normal summon. The Beasts all have really powerful ignition effects and they contact fuse in a very powerful bosses that we're gonna go into now. Let's just, uh, let's get Wen in rotation. We'll banish Wen here. Sure. So we're gonna tag out of Ritual Beast Tamer Elder and Spiritual Beast Tamer Canahawk into Ritual Beast Altai Canahawk. Now this is the card. So what we're gonna do here is trigger the ignition effect of Altai Canahawk to target two of my banished Ritual Beast cards and return them to the graveyard to add a Ritual Beast card from my deck to my hand. I'm gonna target Spiritual Beast Canahawk and Ritual Beast Tamer Elder. Next, I will chain the effect of Altai Canahawk, which returns this card to my extra deck, then targets two of my banished monsters, one Tamer and one Beast, and summons them in defense. Is that okay? That is fine. All right, so this will go to the extra deck. We will summon back Wen and Canahawk. Now we'll try to resolve the first effect as much as possible, which will send the Elder to the graveyard. And then because Elder was sent to the graveyard, we do still get to resolve the effect that adds from deck to hand. And we're gonna grab Ritual Beast Ambush here. Now we could do this a second time if we had not special summoned the Elder, but as it stands right now, we have a Wen that's been specialed and a Canahawk that's been specialed. And uh, as you know, that is, uh, that's, that's no bueno. Uh, so we're gonna go Canahawk here. We are gonna banish uh, Spiritual Beast Petalfin. 
We love soft ones per turns. Folks, we love soft ones per turns. Uh, speaking of soft ones per turns, did you know that Ulti Canahawk is a soft ones per turn? That's uh, true. So I can go Wen and Canahawk into uh, Ulti Canahawk, then return two of those to get another one. But that's a little unsafe because then Ulti Canahawk doesn't have the capacity to tag out. So instead, we are going to banish Wen and Canahawk, call it here, and go for Ritual Beast Ulti Petalfin, uh, which is a real anus of a card. It cannot be destroyed. This is just destroyed. El Shadal Wendigo. Yep. It, well, actually, it is literally Wendigo. <laughs> I believe it is It is factually Wendigo before yes. the incident. Okay, uh, that's going to be it. That's my turn one setup. It took seven minutes, right? That's why we needed uh, to ban this card. Looking at the clock, no. We're in about three at this point. If you And I narrated trouble. my plays! Okay, so we have a pedal fin. Uh, we also have ambush as well, which can I read ambush? I know it like special summons things, I think. Uh, yes. So here, let me put these back in my hand so I don't reveal anything. So ambush says target a tamer and a spiritual beast that is banished or in the grave and then special them both. And then you also have, I know there's steeds in this deck as well, which I think does something with popping, like with like, I think you pop your monsters and opponents cards or something uh, like that. Oh no. Um, steeds is the original steeds. Uh, it it uh, pops monsters up to the number of ritual beasts that you have on the field. It does not target. Okay, so that's actually a great card. Okay, yeah. cool. So I'll draw, stand by main, and then Windigo is just like an asshole because it's 2800 defense, but also like it can't be destroyed by card, card effects. effects. Yes. And then uh, during either player's turn, I can tag it out to summon two banished uh, monsters, cool. one tamer and okay, one Okay, so if it were to be threatened, yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, main one, I guess we lead with the boy, Mr. Man of the Thousand Hands. All good with me, buddy. So we'll go ahead and and think on what we want to add here. We'll go ahead and add ourselves a copy of Reenact a Hand. Yes. Whoa, 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 uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Reenact a Hand? Buddy, I bet you don't have three of that card, do ya? Unfortunately, I do not. <laughs> the new ban list. Uh, we're down a copy, sadly. Oh, uh, and I'm sure it makes it, the though. deck unplayable. Reenact's fine. Yeah. This deck sucks. Yeah. Well, I don't know why we're still playing it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and grab Klauselus. I'm going to shortcut a bit here. Pitch yeah. the Klauselus. I'm going to get Kaleidomir. Sounds good. Uh, Kaleidoscope. I like Kaleidomir better. I think that was the OCG name. I think it sounds cooler. So we're going to activate Kaleidoscope. Uh, we're going to pitch. Uh, I do have Herald in my extra deck this time. I made sure. Uh, and we're going to summon Necroz of Unicorn. And then we'll trigger the Arc Light if you're okay with it. I am not. Uh, we are going to activate ritual beast steeds so and whoa just... whoa whoa we're not done yet i'll chain ritual beast ambush sounds good to me so then you get to special and then you get to pop yeah so we're gonna go elder plus petal fin and then okay. we are going to steeds to pop these two sure and then after all that resolves i still get to go arc lights yep yeah i would really really love uh to have held that steeds just a little longer but letting you make a four is rough uh letting you get to gung near is rough uh, so we'll just do what we have to. None of these, aside from Petalfin, do anything, correct? Oh, none of them do anything, period. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, perfect. That sounds like <laughs> the hallmark of a great deck. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll just get Trish here, then. That's fine. Uh, we will activate Mirror. We did open Mirror. Um, that is annoying. I will not respond to that. Okay. Uh, so we'll send the Shuret that I also <laughs> hard drew. We'll just go for the Trish. Wow. Decent opener. Uh, so we'll go Trish 1, Shuret 2. Uh, okay. We are going to chain Ulti Petalfin here. Makes sense. Uh, we're going to summon back Wen and Canahawk. And then okay. Trish is fine. So I also get to search off of the Shuret here. So I'm going to grab myself... Let's see. I uh, could just get another Brio, could get another Shuret, but Shuret's already in rotation, so I don't really care that much. I guess I'll just take a Brio for follow-up. Sure. Sounds good. Let's do that. Uh, and then we get to resolve Trish. So let's go for the hand. Uh, so don't get rid of it yet. So we're going to go for this one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to banish... I don't know if anything in the grave is, like, super relevant. Can you recycle the traps in this deck? Absolutely not. Okay, I figured as much. So everything in here is basically worthless. Uh, let's just get rid of steeds, because who cares? Yeah, sure. And banishing these things, like, isn't, like, does not do a, a goddamn thing. Yeah, thing. Cause you can just get them back. So, like, this doesn't even really matter. Um, uh, screw it. I will just get rid of Kanahawk then. 
That seems correct. This card is very okay. frustrating. The card you hit in the hand was Ritual Beast Tamer Lara, which is Wolf Bark. And then we'll go to battle. And when is Wolf Bark from, from Banish, correct? That's yes. correct. Okay. Yeah. I do I do remember these cards very vaguely, but yes. not, not too well. Uh, we're just going to go to battle with Trish then, sadly. I don't think there's really much else I can do here. Uh, mm -hmm. We will take out, I believe the Ritual Beast require you to have a Tamer and a Beast. So that I guess correct. since this has been my current line, I guess I should go for the Petal Fin here. Yep. Uh, second main, I've got a back row, and sadly, I think that's the end of my turn. Probably All could right. have done like a million other things better, but I think that was actually okay for what it's worth. All right, we'll go standby main. Well, if that set card is Vanities, you've probably won, but uh, other than that, it's it's going to be a rough one for you here. Uh, we are going to normal summon Ritual Beast Tamer when and activate right. the effect targeting Canahawk. Uh, we're going to activate the effect of Canahawk. Fine by me. We are going to banish Spiritual Beast Rampangu, I believe. Ah, we only get one Canahawk activation. Let's go, Apelio. Uh, okay, cool. That's fine. That All right, we fun. tagging, baby. We tagging. Let's do it. These two out for uh, for Canahawk. Uh, we'll go Canahawk effect to return. We'll go Canahawk effect to tag. That's fine. All right, so we are going to special back. Uh, when has not been specialed and Apelio has not been specialed. And we are going to return... Uh, Canahawk to Grave. That allows you to search. Tell me we're playing Bond. Tell me we're playing Bond. We are not playing Bond. Was Come Bond on. even out? No, it wasn't. <laughs> That's why we're not Excellent. playing Excellent. All right. Excellent. Uh, next, we're going to activate Spiritual Beast Apelio. This allows me to banish a Ritual Beast from my graveyard to increase the attack of all my Ritual Beasts for 500 until the end of the turn. Uh, we're going to banish uh, Petalfin. You want to know something extremely funny. I'm down. So Spiritual Beast Apelio increases the attack of my monsters for 500, meaning that my Ulti Apelio would clear your Necroz of Trishula. Except, Ulti Apelio is an Armades on attack, but not just for your cards, for mine as well. Oh, so great. it doesn't get the boost from its own <laughs> fucking monster. Oh, if only this... there was a Twitter thread that you could uh, talk about that in, huh? It's literally in the next Twitter thread. <laughs> it'll, <laughs> it'll be up by the time that this goes up. All right, uh, what are we doing here? Um, we're going to banish... Uh, oh, we haven't even gotten Lara yet. Oh, the choke point is actually going to be the spiritual beasts. That's a rough place to be. We're going to banish Elder and Apelio uh, in order to make Ulti Canahawk again. Okay. Uh, behold the magic of once per turns. So we'll go Ulti Canahawk for the two and then Ulti Canahawk to tag. Uh, we are going to special back Petalfin and uh, the Elder that we haven't used yet. Sure. And we are going to return uh, the Steeds. Uh, we will resolve the effect. We're going to grab an, uh, Rampangu. Uh, we are going to activate Petalfin's effect to return a card you control to the hand. Man, I really want to return Trish, but that's like the absolute worst idea in history. We're going to return the back What do you row. mean? You're going to go after the back row? Okay, yeah. is this all one effect? You don't have to discard for cost? Okay. Uh, you do, yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, you have to banish for cost. It's uh, it's Rampango. Figured as much. Okay, well, I guess I should probably do this now then. Mind Crush Steeds. Okay, that's rough. Uh, down goes Steeds. Okay. And last card in hand, sir. I get to look at your hand. We don't have the mind crush ruling around it. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, doesn't do one. anything here. I am swimming in elders. So next, we are going to banish the elder and the petalfin uh, for... Hey, it's happening again, baby. Ulti Canahawk. There it is. What a uh, great card. We're going to go Canahawk here. Uh, we're going to target uh, Lara, who we have not yet summoned, and Rampangu, who we have not yet summoned, uh, as our tag out targets. And we're going to also return the Ulti petalfin to grave. Sure. Uh, we'll go one two um let's grab steeds again baby let's do it i guess i should have set that steeds to play around mc not that i think it really would have done anything to be fair i mean i don't know if you were aware that mind crush main deck was a uh, part of the meta at this point <laughs> yeah so now we're in a weird position um all of the spiritual beasts are fours but we don't really have a clean way to get to those as a result i think that Though I could make a three, there's no good threes at this time. So we are just going to banish Lara, banish Ram, or we're going to trigger Rampangu. We are going to uh, banish uh, probably Canahawk because we have everyone in rotation. And then send a, uh, a Normie Canahawk to grave. We'll get this guy out here too. Uh, we will go once again into Ulti Petalfin. Uh, and then we will set set two. Could be anything. Could literally could be, be anything, anything is, is the problem. Yep. And then we will pass turn. All right. Let's draw. Stand by main. All good. Uh, it's very funny that Trish can't hit over Ulti Petalfin. Very funny. I find it hilarious. Yes. Uh, let's go Brio to start. Uh, off of Brio, we're going to grab Gungnir. Yeah. 
So that gives us protection from your steeds for now anyway. Uh, let's go battle phase. And if you're on decisive armor, you're on it. Yeah, that's fine. I will declare an attack on ulti pedal fin. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Proceed to damage. 100% okay. All right, I do have the decisive armor. Okay. Uh, second main. Kind of just want to keep the resources. So yeah, screw it. Let's pass. Sure. All right, the whole deck is tamers and uh, beasts, so Apelio. <laughs> I guess there was a pretty high likelihood you were going to hit one, so. All right, so this is a little crusty. We don't have a clean out to Trish because you have Gungnir. Unfortunately for you, I think I am satisfied just sitting forever. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll get some stuff going. Steeds and... Uh, when uh, we're gonna make Altai Canahawk for the millionth time. Uh, we're gonna go Altai, um, target, and then uh, target, target. Uh, we're gonna grab uh, Ambush. We'll go Canahawk here. We'll banish another Rampangu. Uh, we'll banish Lara and Canahawk for Altai Canahawk. Altai, uh, we'll target Lara and Petalfin. Let's target Lara and Pangu. Uh, we'll tag into Pangu and Elder, and then we'll resolve Canahawk. Uh, we will grab Pangu. This is just so easy if I put the Trish back in your hand. But it's just like... You oh. have the option to do that, I'm just saying. I know, I just really... It's, it's really bad. I'm going to banish Elder and Pangu. Uh, we are going to go into Canahawk. Uh, we're going to go Canahawk one more time, target Petalfin and Lara. Which of the tamers have we not used? I think you used Lara already, so I think you have to go when. When, yeah. Uh, so we'll go, yeah, Petalfin and Lara. Uh, okay. We'll return Lara to Grave and tag out for when and Petalfin. Sure. And I believe at this point you've gone through all of them. We're going to use that to grab... We'll grab Lara. You have no idea how much I want to Petalfin this, uh, but I'm not going to. We will wait. Uh, for the 15th turn in a row... Oh! Are you out of ulti pedal fin? This deck is only on two ulti pedal fin. Jeez, what did you all think we were putting in the graveyard? Sheesh. Uh, no problem. Uh, it's actually not an issue at all. Uh, <laughs> of course. Uh, we'll just go for ulti apelio. Why not? Uh, we'll set one, and uh, back to you, bad boy. Uh, do I know that's Ambush? I believe so. You know Ambush and Steeds are set. And then Etelli's the other one. All yeah. right, I'll draw. Main one, uh, yep. I guess we're in the same issues before, where it's like, I can try here, but I don't really want to, like, for because the problem is Gungnir only protects one Necroz monster. It doesn't protect all of them. Correct. So the problem is, if I overcommit, then I'm going to lose the resources anyway. But if I don't, like, do something, then, I mean, we're just basically running in circles here at this point. Uh, you're uh, running in I circles. Which I could be okay with. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I got plans. I'm kind of fine just sitting here. We've been, this is like a, what, 20 something minute game one. And like, we still haven't even touched each other's life tolls at this point. Yeah, fuck it. Battle. Yeah. I'll try it. We's out. Uh, let's go Pangu Wen. Sure. I'll take out the Pangu. Go. <laughs> I'm chilling. Ambush. Go for it. Uh, we'll grab Pangu from Grave and who cares? Uh, this guy. Uh, Steeds, eh? Try to pop here in end phase. Yeah. Final copy of Steeds. That's correct. Um, so you want to try it here, and then that forces Gungnir, and then... Yeah, hey, I'll Gungnir, sure. Okay. Uh, I will start turn. Stand sure. by me. Uh, okay. Um, whew, just a lot going on here. Uh, let's go Pangu and Elder for Kanahawk. For the 900th time this duel. Uh, we're going to go Kanahawk, um, Petalfin, and Elder. Sure. Returning Pangu. Uh, uh, let's grab Elder. Uh, we're going to trigger Petalfin. Uh, banish Elder targeting Trish. You got it. After 10,000 years. Uh, we're going to banish Petalfin and Elder uh, for Apelio. Uh, we are going to normal Lara. Uh, we are going to Lara resummon Canahawk. Uh, we're going to Canahawk. Uh, we're going to banish Canahawk. Uh, we are going to banish Canahawk, Lara. It doesn't really matter here. We'll do Altai. Uh, we're going to Altai targeting Pelio Rampangu. Okay. Uh, we're going to grab Ambush. Uh, Final we're gonna Ambush. Tag out Altai. For Lara, Apelio. We're gonna Apelio banish Rampangu. Okay. We're gonna tag out these two for Apelio. Sure. To attack. Let's uh, you know, fucking go. So this is two K. 
uh, Valk. Ah, uh, I was hoping it wasn't Valk. That's disastrous. Uh, okay. Let's get rid of this decisive armor. I don't think I need that anymore. Uh, maybe I do need that. Let me get rid of. Hmm. Let me get rid of a redundant Brio. I have two of them. Sure. Uh, we'll go main two. This is where you overlay the Apelios for a strike bouncer, right? Yeah, totally. I That would not be <laughs> terrible. Uh, I'll just pass turn here. Uh, I'll go ahead and draw. Stand by main. I appreciate you getting rid of my Trish, because now I can get more mirrors here. Yep. Uh, so let's go ahead and banish both mirrors. Yep. I think I want to banish... What do I want to keep? Uh, let's get rid of Unicorn, and let's get rid of... Uh, Gungnir's kind of cool, but I don't think we're going to need anymore. I'll oh, we'll get rid of Gungnir. Let's grab a couple mirrors. Um, I on which ones I want here. I know you have an Ambush, and I know you have an e -Telly. Yep. So not really anything on the field threatens me at this point. Correct. So I guess I could try to do some cleanup duty. Yeah, sure. I'll try. All right. Uh, I'll get Kaleido... Yep. And I will get... Yep. All right. Uh, we'll start with Kaleido. Yes. Uh, we're going to go for Herald into Unicor. Uh, trigger the Herald. A ritual monster or spell. I will just grab myself another Valk. This is where the third Brio is actually kind of coming up, I'll be honest. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure there's probably a way to sequence this uh, the way I want it to without the third Brio, but uh, I'm just not smart enough to figure that out. So uh, we'll go Mirror. We're going to go ahead and get rid of our... Uh, sure. We'll do these two. Yeah. Uh, we'll go for the Trish. Uh, we will Valor the Trish. I see, I see. That is pretty good. There's no Trish for Trish here. Well, I can't do much else, so I guess I can do a little bit of cleanup duty at the very least, but you obviously have all your cards. So I don't know where that really gets me, so I guess I'll just go to battle. Uh, Unicorn to when? Uh, that's fine. I'll take eight. It'll be eight. First damage, woo! And then Trish into LT Apelio. Yeah, I'll take 100. Okay. Uh, second main, I have a set. Over to you. Better not be vanities. Stand by main. Uh, battle. I will walk into Let's Unicorn straight here. Forward. So you need the effects. Uh, sure, I'll take three. I'm really hoping oh. to clear both of those. But sadly, it did not happen. You are holding... Oh, wait, I have Valk. What the fuck Valk. am I doing? Okay, Hold on. sure. Yeah. Yeah, I have Valk. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Oh, wait, I can't do it. You have, um, you have ulti Apelio. <laughs> yep, Damn, never mind. I was hoping that you wouldn't realize. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, this, this gets into a weird layers question because, like, Ulti Apelio isn't affected by Unicor, but that effect is negated, but the, the end result is uh, get owned liberal. Um, <laughs> second main, I'm going to uh, set one and back to you. Let me switch this. Another defense. set card. What else do you play? You still have an ambush. Yes, Rata I do. Steeds. Yes, I do. Is that like the third e -telly? I guess it could be, technically. Uh, Sure, I'll draw. I know you still have ambush. I'll just try for battle. Try for the ulti. Hmm, that's fine. I'll take 100 here. Go ahead. I'm going to e -telly. Sure. Uh, res, I will torrential. Interesting. Indeed. That is fine. Yeah, we'll wipe. Uh, I'll draw for turn. Mm. I'll say we've got we haven't had a game like this in history in a while. I will say I'll ambush it instead. Uh, we're gonna grab the ones from grave. Uh, let's get when Apelio, and then we'll sure. trigger Apelio. We're gonna banish Lara. It's fine. Okay. Uh, draw for turn. Stand by me. Okay. You um. <clears throat> You have a Valk. I know that, right? I also searched that, so you know that anyway. Yeah, so we will go Apelio here, Banished Elder. Uh, we will tag out. Conahawk time. Uh, yes. And then we'll immediately put him back. Uh, we are going to get... Both effects, I imagine? Nope. <laughs> oh. We, we, we's out. Uh, we're going to go uh, Apelio again. Uh, we're going to banish Pengu. Okay. Normal Pengu. Cool. Sure. Is a 26. Because it's boosted twice from Apelio? Correct. Uh, yeah. Oh, wait. I'm, I'm being bad. Sorry. <laughs> we still have an Apelio. You guy Apelio? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow. wow. So how much is this? Uh, this is 26 plus 26. So the Apelio effect just, like, lingers the whole time? Uh, just until the end of the damage step. So here's the weirdness here. Uh, the Apelio okay. is going to attack for 26. The Rampengu right. is going to attack. Uh, that is going to put you in a scenario where you can't Valk the ulti Apelio if I attack direct. Just a question of if you want to stop the Pangu or not. I'm good. Uh, second main, I will set one back to you. Another set. Yeah. What the hell you? Stop drawing back row, Joseph. God. The whole deck is right. gas at this point. I'm going to be honest. I'll with draw. You. 
Yeah, so is mine. Dark hole. Mm, that's disastrous, actually. That is really fucking bad. Uh, we'll tag out ulti. Uh, we'll go Lara Apelio. And then everything dies? Yeah. Uh, mirror time, baby. Yeah. I think I only have cycles left <laughs> in my deck, which is not great, I'll be honest. <laughs> I need to banish monsters for this, too. Uh, let's get rid of... has to be a Necroz monster. Yes. Let's get rid of... really want to Trish you again. I just don't think that's happening. Get rid of Decisive and Unicor. Unicor is probably pretty useless in the graveyard. Okay. Um, I have two cycles. Yes. Uh, you still have one back row. You're out of ambushes. You're out of steeds. So Correct. at this point, I don't know what you have. It could be literally fucking, anything. It could be literally anything. It could be, I don't know if torrentials at like three in this format. I have no idea. Uh, I also don't know anything else this deck plays for back row. So, uh, fuck it. Cycle. Tribute monsters from your hand or field, which will summon. You could have the second shirt to go Trish. It's probably likely. Uh, we'll go emptiness. Fuck. <laughs> yep. Go ahead. All right. Welcome to hell, buddy. Oh, I don't know if I can do that. Oh, do I have that kind of time? No, I don't. Uh, back to you. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. The oh, man of fuck. hands. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. We have a clock, ladies and gentlemen. We have a clock. All right. Um, I, I think I only have like one or two targets for this in my deck, and that is correct. Let's grab... I've got a few options, actually. Uh, this one's the funniest. I'll get Valk. Yes. 14. Yeah. Clock's ticking, Mr. Rothschild. I don't know if I have an out for this card. <laughs> Back to you. All right, let's go. You couldn't topple 1,000 hands, but what about oh 11,000 hands? Disastrous. <laughs> Do you still, you still have targets for this shit? I have a unicorn. Yeah. 14. Yes. 14. Yes. <laughs> the beating continues. <laughs> oh boy, that is very not good. It's exact lethal too. All right, uh, MST this. I will change shared ride. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, when you're out of fucking cards. We're gonna go Sark. Uh, I'm gonna banish Raigeki. <laughs> and pray. I'm just trying to get cards Draw. out of my hand here, buddy. I still don't know what I lose to at this point. What do you have? Fucking Mirror Force? Could be anything. Could, it be, could be literally, literally I, Fuck it. If you have Mirror Force, you have Mirror Force. I don't. I have fucking Ring of Destruction. Woo! <laughs> oh, what a butt blaster. That was game one! That was game one, folks. Okay, so at the end of the duel there, I just literally didn't have any monsters in my deck. I had searched everything. Is, is this a common attribute of this deck? Is that you just run out of monsters eventually? <laughs> yep. Uh, you want to know another common attribute of this deck? Sure. Oh. <laughs> I see. I will draw. Yeah. Stand by main. Mm -hmm. uh, let's start with a pitched Brio. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> Grab ourselves. Actually, don't even want to start with pitched. Nah, fuck that. We're not doing that. Um... I have Kaleido instead. We'll start there. Okay, uh, Maxi. Gross. Yeah, draw uh, me out of this one, buddy. That. That's fine. Send that. Unicor. And then effect of arc lights. Yes. I guess I'll grab the mirror. Oh, okay. And then I'm going to pitch Brio. That's fine. Uh, I'll add Valk. Yep. Can you please stop doing and that shit? I'll just smack you for 23. Uh, I have to get rid of this guy anyway, so we'll ring. All right, we'll both take 23. That's fine. And over to you. Shit. Okay, that was Hope not a productive card maxing. helped. Uh, it did not. Uh, back to you. Excellent. All right, uh, I'll draw. Main, uh, I do have a mirror I can banish. You do. So guess what? That's what we'll do. Uh, we'll get rid of you. We'll get rid of you. Do these mirrors say get one Necroz spell? That's cool. It can search itself. So Correct. let's do it again. Get a Kaleido mirror. That's fine. Kaleido mirror. That's fine. No second maxi. Unicorn again. That's correct. Effect of Herald. That's fine. I will add Gungnir. Sure. Yeah. Mirror. Yes. Pitch Trish. Uh, okay. Trish, sure it. Okay, we have Valor at least. Uh, that's nice. Uh, sure it will get us Brio. Uh, as much as I would like to just kill you, don't think I can unfortunately so i'll just try battle for 5k that's fine actually i'm a dingus i could have killed you that's okay uh second main uh don't really think i'm doing much else i'll just i'll just probably pass on this go ahead stand by main. uh foolish 
That's a card. Uh, we are going to send Kanahawk. Okay. Uh, Raigaki. That is also a card. I have Gungnir. Yep. Trying to think what's more important here. Trish is bigger, but Unicorn shuts off all your stuff from the extra deck. But if you can just have any way to get to a Pelio, then it doesn't matter because you can just run over Unicor. Uh, but you can't run over Trish, which is kind of funny. Uh, sure, I'll protect Trish. Unicorn can go. Uh, I'll normal Lara, target Canahawk. Psych, Axie. you win. <laughs> Way! We did it. Oh cool. my god. What a, what a miserable <laughs> that hand. That was the Ritual Beast experience. It was, that was yeah. the Ritual it, Beast it experience. It very much was. Ran out of monsters in deck game one just to get owned game two. Do you want to do the uh, the old best of three? Well, we could. If it's up to you. Yeah, I. Well, I, I'm always down to play again. That one was pretty. Uh, All right, sure. Let's mid. let's let's go again. All right, game three. Uh, you lost, so I will let you go first. Again, exact same thing could happen. And I'm hoping that's the case, and the audience probably is too. Ooh, okay. you might get your hope. Uh, Kanahawk, uh, we will banish. You at least have a monster out. this time. Indeed, we do. One monster. Yep. Excellent. All right, I'll draw. Yep. Main one, not a particularly great hand. Everyone playing Necroz is probably like, what do you mean? This hand's great. <laughs> I don't know what anything does here. I will normal summon Dance Princess. Oh! Okay. We're on this card. This card's like fine. It's okay. Uh, I'm going to respond to uh, this. What are you going to do? You're going to hate this. Uh, vanities. <laughs> oh! Yeah, I'm not happy about it. Yeah, I could see why you wouldn't be. All right. Well, I mean, that forces me to just go to battle. Okay, we're not so. dead, folks. We'll take two. Yeah. This is my favorite threatening roar in the format. Second main. God. I mean, I have to do something, right? Uh, we'll go Brio. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, we'll grab Trish, sure. Uh, go ahead. Yep. Normal when target a Pelio. My turn. <laughs> it's at one, buddy. It's at one. <laughs> All right. This is have to, have to be the best dance princess ever. All right. I'll draw. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm taking 100. Smack. You got it. I bet you are. I bet you are. Um, uh, Sega main. Go ahead. You fucking fool. Turn two on a Pelio. It's true. Okay. All right. Uh, Elder. Sure. Apelio. That's fine. Apelio. Sure. Combat! So I take, what, seven here? Yeah. Okay. Oh, thank God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> is this boosted too? Yes, it is. It just it's the... a whole 700. Oh, 700. Do you want, you should valve this, actually. This is I should. Like, mission I really critical. should. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, let's get the fuck out of here. Canahawk target. Uh, oh, I really want the Canahawk, though. Uh, we'll target Canahawk Elder. Then we'll chain itself, uh, targeting a Pelio Elder. To Grave with you. Uh, and we will grab Ambush. Yeah, I don't really think I have a choice. We'll go a Pelio, banish Canahawk. There was maybe a better way to do this. If I tag out for Canahawk and return the Apelio, then we can... Oh, there's really... That, that does work, but it puts me in such a weird position. Uh, we're going to tag these bad boys out. We're going to go for Canahawk again. Sure. We're going to hard Canahawk. Don't like doing this. Uh, we will grab Steeds. Got them both. Bada bing, baby. See ya. We'll draw. Yep. So knowing that you were going to get the Apelio, which I actually forgot about, uh, I probably could have done No one ever before. remembers. It's <laughs> no one ever remembers. Effect. Who would remember the gold sarcophagus? Uh, prep. Yes. This is also at one now. Fun, fun, fun. Uh, <laughs> we'll get Brio. Uh, this is my second Brio, so I should be a little bit mindful of that. Let's just go cycle. Send a shirt for Trish. Yeah. Sh Trish shirt. Glued to my hand. It's a warrior necros. Uh, of which I do have one. I have sure or not shirt. Uh, Clesilus. Yes. I mean, are we just playing like Trish control again, like we were before? Seemed like it was all right. Nothing wrong with Trish Control, baby. We've all been there. What else can I do? I can get another ritual. Uh, I could like mirror for something. You have steeds though. So like, again, I don't really want to like play into steeds. So fuck it, battle. I'll steeds. If you want me to steeds, I'll get that gun near out your hand. All right, we'll trade them off. All right, sure. Uh, I'll take zero here. That's how the defense yep. position works. Second main, I um, think I am probably just content sitting on this. So go ahead. All right, ambush. 
uh, Apelio. Here we go again, baby. Let's go. Stand by me. All you know is that I have in fact, I can Rio guess you... from the prep and Clausulus from the Shurid effect. Uh, we're going to go Apelio here, uh, Banished Steeds. Uh, we are going to tag out for Ulti Canahawk. Uh, Canahawk 1, Canahawk 2. Mm -hmm. Grab Steeds, you know. Yep. I've seen this before. Have you now? Uh, Apelio. Oh, you know what would be really funny? Oh, mm. that's hilarious. Okay, I will actually be doing that line because it's it's just too delicious. Uh, we'll go Altai again. As Lithium would say. Yep. I'll go Steeds, Elder, Canahawk. Uh, let's go Canahawk. Uh, We're going to grab Apelio and banish Lara. Normal Apelio. Or no, we're going to normal Elder, normal Apelio. Then normal Apelio. That's fine. Apelio. This Apelio is now over the Trish. It is now above Trish. <laughs> We've done it, <laughs> folks. Uh, we unfortunately do not have a mechanism to. We can tag into Laura, but we would have had to use the Canahawk to banish an additional monster, which we can't. So, do we want? <sighs> Fine, Altai. <laughs> uh, we'll go these two. We'll grab Ambush. Combat. Sure. My biggest Apelio ever! You son Gets of vowel. a bitch. All right, yeah. Well, well. <laughs> I drew the vow. <laughs> Sorry. It's such, an, it's such a surprise. You know, the thing about Trish is that uh, it does not uh, have out Wendigo. So there <laughs> you go. That is true. Uh, one. I, and you two, now have Wendigos again. Three. Back to you. Three. So you Steed's ambush and. You An unknown card! We'll draw. Oh. Stand by main. I have to yeah. out this fucker again, which is not easy in this deck, I will say. I have a potential plan. Oh, don't like hearing that. But it's not great, I'll be honest. Uh, combat! Yes. Kill Kanaha. No! He's my friend. Never would have guessed. Uh, ooh, this is so bad. It's legitimately terrible, but I have to do it because of the way the hand works out. Kill the Kanahawk. Yep. Uh, sec. In main, we have still not baited out steeds. Correct. So we will pass. <laughs> you will never bait steeds, asshole. Uh, ambush. Yep. Uh, like this. Apelio. Sure. Dura! Stand by main. Apelio. Yep. It's one activation. Ooh. I don't think we can do it three times this turn, sadly. Uh, we will go. I do think it's neat. You can banish the traps for their effects, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go Ulti Canahawk here. Sure. Uh, we're going to go Canahawk when? Return Ambush. Mm hmm. Reb Elder. Uh, Canahawk, banish Petalfin. Uh, I'm going to try to kill you here. Let's go Steeds. Sure. All right. Uh, let's go. Yes. Let's tag out. Uh, Apelio, Lara. Okay. Apelio. Second activation. Uh, Apelio, Lara, Ultai. Banish these two. Uh, we haven't summoned Petalfin or Wen this turn. Petalfin, Wen, or Rampangu. We'll go Ultai, Apelio again. Uh, Elder, Rampangu. There's the Rampangu. Canahawk. Rampangu, Lara. Have we done Lara yet? Uh, yeah, you haven't done when. You've done Lara. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, we're or did not you gonna... do? Or did you? Because when's on the field? Maybe did you did when already? No, when's last turn? Uh, okay, we'll just end the yoinky splunky here. Um, sure. Uh, when to attack? Bah. Uh, well, I do have Valk, but I don't think Valk works in the face of Ulti Apelio. Yeah, let's go. Unaffected by other cards' effects until the end of the damage step, and Valk requires it when you declare an attack. Yep. But if you're ending the battle phase, how does that work? Valkyrus can't stop Ulti Apelio. Oh, there we go. I'm dead, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Congrats, buddy. You got one. Okay, see, but like... <laughs> so you understand how this is meant to go, right? Yes, uh, correct. You have a lot of innate answers to Necroz that other decks don't, you know? You have the ability to triple Apelio if you're playing two copies, which of course the deck is for that reason, to get over mm -hmm. a, an attack position Trishula, which is otherwise just this huge, enormous wall. Uh, you have the capacity to Steeds, which is not only good against your deck, it's good against just everything. I mean, there's a Every reason deck. we call yep. this effect Steeds to this day. Uh, and you have the ability to add like 40 cards to your hand over the course of the game. That first game... Uh, I lost because I had searched every monster in my deck. I had zero yep. remaining. 
Um, and, and it was great because you blanked my shared ride, funny enough. Yeah, I mean, that's that's just the way that this deck works. Unfortunately, in game two, you saw in reality what happens. You have to, though you have a very good Necroz matchup, you have to, have to, have to, have to win it in two games because every third game you are going to brick like nobody's business. It's the, uh, it's the old VW uh scenario for newer players in the audience uh 30 percent there's of the time. also the then there's also the issue of running into time right yeah. our first game i think raw footage was like almost 50 minutes and so if you're playing this in a tournament uh you're going to run into the issue where you only get 40 minutes to play three games and mm. so then you get into the issue of possibly drawing with your opponent as well because maybe if you take the first game maybe they can clean you up in the second game like what happened with us and then it just gets dicey so that's with another issue as well but i will say i mean it was impressive seeing like this deck just go off essentially but it was also impressive to see my deck actually just doing the bare minimum to sort of like just keep you at bay this deck was really really good against necroz in theory its other matchups were terrible which kept it out of really anything other than tier two contention uh but in practice at the top level necroz pilots could do what you did and uh engineer scenarios in which they were able to stay alive to a point where the ritual beast player was out of monsters they'd remove individual ones with stuff like honestly raigeki and dark hole rudimentary 2006 style you but good enough in a lot of instances, keeping off the uh, very few lethal pushes that the deck is actually capable of making by way of Valkyris, and just hoping that they'd never make a triple ulti Gaia Pello, which you can honestly prevent with like uh, Vanities and the like. It's interesting. There's even some interplay between individual cards. Uh, Unicor is really, really frustrating for Ritual Beast, as is a Jin releaser set. Um, of course, they have the tools to out it eventually, but in a deck that's already this bricky, demanding that they open specific cards is kind of a wash. Uh, Gungnir plays really, really well versus Steeds, especially when you have such a limited quantity of them with which you can actually destroy the Trishula. And at the end of the game, you kind of figured out the game plan. You are not going for a single non-Trishula monster. You just make Trishula. If they out it with Steeds, you cycle it back, and that's the whole yep. game plan. Like, yep. if they ever, ever, ever get off to the races, then you're screwed. Uh, but you can pretty much ensure that never happens. I will say too, it was probably nice from the audience's perspective that they actually got to watch Necroz gameplay instead yeah. of just like Jin Lock pass like in the previous episode. <laughs> uh, there was gameplay in the last one. I don't know if it was um, Necroz gameplay. Uh, I will say historical footprint that Ritual Beast left on the uh, the collective community consciousness was mostly just the length of the games. Yeah. That 40 minute game one was not uncommon. Uh, and this is, I, I know that now tier limit mirrors do go to 40 minutes in turn one pretty frequently, uh, but this was the first deck that really did it. Uh, Gishki could do it uh, in a stupid gimmicky way that was designed to exploit the time rules, but this deck playing at speed could go to time in game one. So if you were a Necroz pilot, is, frequently you had to make the call. The difference is the Gishki deck would win. Yeah, that is the difference. Um, but yeah, this deck is a little too bricky. Its matchup spread is a little too lopsided and uh, it just doesn't do enough even in the face of its best matchup uh, for it to really crack into tiered metagame contention. Uh, while it was around at the regional and YCS level, and while it did pick up top 32s, uh, this is pretty much the last you will be seeing of this deck. And for some reason, it picks up a hit on the ban list afterwards as well, in case it wasn't bad enough it can, already. It can take solace in the fact, though, that it's not Yosenju. So yes! Like very true! <laughs> So guys, that's going to wrap it up for another video. I really hope you all enjoyed. Let's go ahead and shout the patrons for all of their continued support. So shout out to Shout1317, Tim Zero Extreme, Moto, MBT Play Medulce, Cameron Smith, Pony Stark Part 2, The Synchro Guy, Dan the Manhoban, Phoenix the Immortal, I Ship MBT and Simo, Draconic, Jordan Coons, Iron Bladesman, Jesse Wood, Chris Hood, Valen Jackson, Dylan Hunter, Cody Brett's Extremely Vulgar Man, Little Fade Leaf, Brody Eastwood, Carlos DT, Flannel Daddy, Hornet in Unit Show, TC Gaming, Thanks for the Sleeves Dad, Max Matthew Brady, Twinkle Muncher, Eater of Crayons, Luabon Yodabon, Helios 515, Simo's Chaos Cooking Draft, Simping for Simo, Cheeks McLapperty, Stolfin Amethyst, Dalton, LGMBTQ, Nim Noodle, Mallow Branch of the Burning Tunnels, Wonder Waffle, Skull Servant, and the Wandering Doomed or Boyfriends, MBT Cancel by All Community Soon, Cancel by All Committee Soon, Cancel by All Players Soon, All Yus, Unis the Bus, The Undertaker vs. Simo and MBT, Shrugs, Ix, The Crystal Beast Enthusiast, ITF, and Corvain. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.